society, we all, we all have a role to, to, to ensure that we play our part in stopping these crimes. South Africans are also encouraged to actively join advocacy and awareness raising programs in our respective communities and sectors. Cabinet also encourages victims to report these heinous crimes to law enforcement authorities who must investigate allegations and act firmly within the ambit of the law to ensure that justice is served. In a separate but related issue, the UN General Assembly proclaimed the 13th of June as International Albinism Awareness Day. The campaign aims to raise awareness about people living with albinism who are fully protected by the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. It is the duty of all South Africans to educate themselves and others in the community on albinism so as to dispel myths and misconceptions. This will alleviate the trauma experienced by people with albinism as well as their families. Cabinet wants to reiterate the fact that people living with albinism have all the constitutional rights and the right to life, just like any other South African. The second area is on International Association of Athletics Federation decision. Cabinet expressed concerns with the developments regarding the new regulations of the International Association of Athletics Federations. Cabinet welcomes the work being done by the Department of Sports and Recreation South Africa and the fact that a high-level panel of experts in the related fields of medicine and law were assembled by the department. This panel will study these regulations closely and interrogate the scientific evidence that the IAAF had relied upon. It will evaluate all available research and scientific evidence as well as related ethical issues and use the outcome to challenge these regulations in the appropriate forums. Cabinet calls upon South Africans to support all athletes that may be affected by these regulations, both here at home and in the rest of the world. We want to assume that these regulations have got nothing to do with the capability of Casta Semenya. The third area is on the situation in the Northwest Province. Cabinet was presented with a report by the Interministerial Task Team on the Northwest as appointed by His Excellency President Ramaphosa. The report provided an account of the preliminary work that has been done in the province over the last two weeks. Cabinet was satisfied with the progress made by the IMTT in its efforts to stabilize the Northwest. The IMTT led by Minister in the Presidency, Dr. Nkosaza Nadlamini Zuma, will remain seized with the Northwest issues. A detailed media briefing on the outcomes of this work by the IMTT will be held in the Northwest in the coming week. The fourth area is on Japan-Africa Public-Private Economic Forum. President Cyril Ramaphosa delivered a keynote address at the inaugural Japan-Africa Public-Private Economic Forum held at the Sentin Convention Center from the 3rd to the 4th of May 2018. The forum was co-hosted by South Africa together with the government of Japan and the Japan External Trade Organization. Cabinet welcomes the continued commitment that was made at the Tokyo International Conference on African Development in Nairobi in 2016, which saw Japan pledging 30 billion US dollars in Africa between 2016 and 2019. More than 100 Japanese companies have a presence in Africa currently. The fifth area is on the United States steel and aluminum tariff increase. Cabinet expresses its disappointment on the decisions by the U.S. not to exempt South Africa from the application of steel and aluminum duties. The South African government will continue to engage with the U.S. authorities to find a mutually acceptable outcome. Cabinet also encourages domestic exporters to continue to lobby U.S. buyers to apply for product exemptions 
as South African comp companies expo export niche products and semi-processed products for further processing in the United States. The sixth area is on the revitalization of the industrial parks. Cabinet welcomes the completion of the first phase of the revitalization of the Putajichaba Industrial Park in the province of the Free State as an important milestone in implementing the revitalization of the industrial parks program. The 50 million upgrades will, will attract more local entrepreneurs to set up their operations due to the improved infrastructure and the security. The seventh area is on investments. Cabinet congratulates the partnership between the Department of Trade and Industry and Aspen Pharmacare, which has resulted in the announcement of a 1 billion rands investment in the pharmaceutical drug plant in Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape. The pharmaceutical company benefited from the DTI's 121 tax incentive with a tax credit of about 209 million rands. The opening of the facility will create 500 new jobs. This is a significant investment which is taking South Africa into a new level in the manufacturing space and creating the necessary jobs that South Africa needs. The eighth, the eighth area is on the lower data costs. Cabinet welcomes the new rules proposed by the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa to improve regulations around data, SMS, and voice services. The changes are, step, are a step towards ensuring fairness in business practice around data pricing and ensure that consumers will not lose unused data. The market inquiry being conducted by the Competition Commission will highlight and focus on additional measures to ensure that South African data prices support broader digital access and pre prepare us for the opportunities created by the fourth industrial revolution. On the mining sector, which is the ninth point, Cabinet joins President Cyril Ramaphosa in expressing sadness following the loss of lives of mine workers at the Siba and Yesti Lotus Drifontaine mine near Carltonville on the West End, and furthermore extends its condolences to the families and friends of the deceased. Our Minister of Mineral Resources, Mr. Gwede Mantashe, is expected to represent government at a memorial service to be held today. Cabinet urges the mining sector to fast track their research that will assist us in the capability of detecting seismic activities in the mines and save lives. The tenth area is on the UN Children's Fund. Cabinet joins President Cyril Ramaphosa in expressing appreciation of UNICEF's support and cooperation in empowering the youth of South Africa. The executive director of UNICEF, Ms. Henrietta Foe, paid a courtesy call to the president on Monday the 7th, May 2018. She outlined UNICEF's report on South Africa's initiatives in the area of education, work, work skills development, and economic opportunities for young people, especially for those between 10 and 18 years old. UNICEF commended South Africa's efforts to create opportunities for young people to participate meaningfully in the economy and expressed willingness to assist our country's schools with the provision of water and sanitation. UNICEF has invited South Africa to share its successes on youth empowerment as part of its global campaign to advance opportunities for youth, a sure sign of, of our country's strengthening relations with the United Nations. The following area is on cabinet decisions. Cabinet approved the Industrial Policy Action Plan IPEP 2018-2019 up to 2020-2021. This is the 10th reiteration of a rolling annual action plan aligned to successive three year, three year cycles of the medium term expenditure framework. The revised IPEP summarizes the achievements of the industrial policy over the past nine years. It also provides an economic analysis of the global and domestic economy relevant to industrial policy, summarizes the challenges and constraints to the optimal implementation of our industrial policy, as well as a range of transversal and sector-specific time-bound 
key action plans assigned to the respective departments. Cabinet also approved the tripartite free trade agreement to be tabled in, par in Parliament for ratification. This agreement establishes the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, East African community and Southern African development community. This is, this is a key Africa-led project that marks a decisive step to overcome the continent's colonial heritage of small fragmented markets by promoting intra-African investments and attracting more foreign investment into the free trade area. As a result of regional integration efforts and stable economies, there has been stro strong growth in the intra-African investment. Cabinet approved South Africa's third national communication report for submission to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. The primary objective of this is to achieve the, stab the stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere to a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic activities from interfering with the climate system. South Africa's report contains an analysis of its programs from the initial national communication to the second national communication and subsequently the third communication report as reviewed by the international community as well as domestic stakeholders. On bills that were presented before cabinet, cabinet approved the submission of the aquaculture development bill of 2018 to parliament. The bill, which came out of full consult consultation with all relevant stakeholders in the aquaculture sector, seeks to promote aquaculture development in the ocean's economy. Cabinet also approved the submission of Occupational Health and Safety Bill of 2018 to Parliament. The bill amends the Occupational Health and Safety Act of 1993. Once adopted, the bill will ensure greater protection of workers in respect of injuries and diseases at the workplace. The bill establishes a clearly defined health and safety management system and is in line with the international best practice. It also provides for mandatory risk assessment to be conducted by the employer and a workplace specific risk management plan developed and implemented to minimize the exposure of employees at risk. On messages coming from Cabinet, Cabinet congratulates President Cyril Ramaphosa, who has been invited by the International Labour Conference governing body to co-chair the Global Commission on Future of Work. The President has also been invited to address the conference, which is celebrating 100 years of existence. Whilst there, the President will pay homage and honour the centenary of former President Nelson Mandela. Cabinet thanks the Africa Group in the ILO governing body for leading the discussion in Geneva and appreciates the discussions held by the country's ruling party in their local constituencies. On condolences, Cabinet expresses condolences to the family and friends of the late former and first Minister of Finance of the Democratic South Africa, Mr. Derek Keyes, who played a significant role in the smooth handover of Treasury to a democratically elected government in, in 1994. Cabinet extends well wishes to the Muslim community as they begin fasting for the holy month of Ramadan next week. During Ramadan, Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset as they spend time deepening their spirituality. On the upcoming events, President Cyril Ramaphosa will today visit the Department of Defense and the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, respectively, as part of his efforts to engage with senior leadership to ensure that the work of government is effectively aligned. This visit is part of the President's commitment announced in his maiden State of the Nation address in February 2018 to visit every national department in this regard. Deputy President David Mabuza will today address the third Human Resource Development Council of South Africa Summit at the Emperor's Palace in Johannesburg under the theme Partnerships, Revitalizing Work and Learning. The two-day summit will bring together key industry leaders, 
labor experts and academics to deliberate on various issues, including proposals to deal with youth unemployment and advance empowerment and the fourth industrial revolution. Cabinet also reiterates the invitation to South Africans to join the year-long centenary celebrations of Tata Nelson Mandela and Mama Albertina Nunzigelelo Sisulu, who helped build the foundation of the South Africa's democracy we enjoy today. The Interministerial Committee on the Nelson Mandela Centenary and the Centenary of Albertina Nunzigelelo Sisulu launched the national program this week. Details of the celebrations can be found on the government website, where other upcoming government scheduled briefings and activities can also be found. Lastly, on appointments. All appointments approved by Cabinet are subject to the verification of qualifications and the relevant clearance. The first one is of Ms. Lerato Matabuche as the DTI representative to the Board of the Export Credit Insurance Corporation of South Africa Limited. And the second one is of Ms. R.S. Mukhaladi as Deputy Director General Institutional Support and Coordination in the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. That is the briefing post our cabinet meeting yesterday. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Uh, at this point, we'll take uh, questions. Can I start with Pretoria, as I usually do? Thank you, DG. No questions in Pretoria. Thank you. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks, Minister and Pumla. Uh, Gay Davis, Eyewitness News. Um, Minister, I just wondered whether, in terms of the Cabinet's condemnation of <clears throat> gender-based violence, there was any uh, discussion around uh, the allegations against Ndudusi Manana, a member of Parliament, and uh, thoughts about what, what should happen in that regard. Um, and also, uh, the D Director General of the uh, Finance Department, Dondo Mokhjane, was addressing a high-level conference in Gauteng this week, where he said, among other things, that South Africa is not a failed state yet, but it's on the verge. And essentially, he was appealing to public servants to pick up the baton in terms of stopping the failure to comply with prescripts in terms of spending. And we yesterday learned during a meeting of the Water and Sanitation Committee that uh, since 2014, irregular expenditure in that department has skyrocketed to not 4 billion as the department disclosed, but actually closer to 6.5 billion rand because just over 2.4 billion of that was not disclosed by the department on the basis that they were going to get a qualified audit anyway. Would you like to comment on that, particularly whether this was discussed by Cabinet and the level of concern about a situation where we're seeing uh, a, a, perhaps a regression in terms of um, financial uh, controls? Thank you. Hi, I'm Abia of the SABC. I'm covered by Gay. My question was about the ANC MP, uh, Manana. Morning, Minister Paul Vecchiot from Bloomberg. On the free trade agreement, um, will that have to come to Parliament for ratification at all? If so, when? And then secondly, has Parliament, uh, Cabinet sorry, been briefed by the President on his plans for a, an investment summit and job summit. He mentioned the other day, they, they, or hinted there could be some kind of problem setting it up. Has Cabin aware of the plans? Have they been briefed for those? Thank you. Jan Gerber, News 24. Um, Mr. can you perhaps elaborate a bit about the report on Northwest? Um, what, what is the... Um, the, m the most immediate um, concerns for, for cabinet regarding Northwest, and is there a timeline on the resolution of the situation? Thanks. Thank you very much. Let let me appreciate the questions that have been raised. As as I indicated, cabinet did reflect on uh, issues uh, with regard to gender-based uh, violence, and. Uh, in our overall uh, uh, comment and reflection was amongst other things to deal with the, the, the issues broadly. Amongst others, it's around uh, 
victim support, as well as uh, repeat offenders, and lastly, the issues of uh, 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 death and, and, and assaults that are maimed by individuals known to, to, known to victims. It is on those bases that broadly Cabinet actually reflected, but Cabinet did not discuss Mtutuzi Manana as an individual, but Cabinet did reflect on gender-based violence in the Republic of South Africa and how it has been meted, and that is the issue that uh, we, we dealt with precisely because uh, the, the item to do the manana was not necessarily an item, but the reflection on uh, gender-based violence was, was the subject. If he as a person is affected, yes, we must condemn his act, and we do hope that the law will take its own course so that then no individual, irrespective of standing, can actually run away with the infliction of pain, humiliation, and degradation of the rights of other individuals, particularly women and, and, and other vulnerable, vulnerable groups. The, the issue that is being raised by uh, the DG, uh, Mukhajani, um, uh, it, it is quite interesting that he raised the issue about not a failed state yet. Surely he should have also elaborated on how the South African government and the system has got processes in place to deal with those kind of issues so that then we, we save and protect the country from actually being a failed state. And I do believe that it is not in the best interest of any individual to contribute to that. With regard to the issues of the Department of Water and Sanitation, I think that is a matter that Parliament is seized with. And uh, we all are looking forward to the processes in Parliament so that those matters can be attended to. For now, I think we must really welcome the efforts of Parliament and hope that everybody will co contribute so that we deal with the myths, we deal with the perceptions, and we deal with the realities and we put corrective measures in place. On, on the free trade agreement, um, it, is, it is now going to be part of our next terms uh, 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 program into Parliament. Uh, so it will be with immediate effect now that it has come past the Cabinet. It would be taken through by the department and the leader of government to make sure that the programming unit of the, of the, of the, of, of the, of the National Assembly does put it uh, for ratification because of its strategic significance for, amongst others, promotion of economic inv investment in South Africa and creation of jobs. Um, cabinet didn't actually get the... the, the, the the briefing around the Jobs and Investment Summit, but we do know it as work in progress. There are streams that are busy within the government departments uh, doing preparations uh, in that regard, and uh, it is work in progress. So yes, we're looking forward to that uh, 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 Investment and Jobs Summit. There are teams. Our department is working with the presidency, trade and industry around uh, packaging information and messaging for that particular significant uh, uh, summit. On the, on the, on the Northwest, as, as we indicated, we did receive a preliminary report. We did reflect on the, on, the, on, the, on the recommendations in the preliminary report. We did appreciate the work, including the intensive work that must again continue to be done in the province of the Northwest. And um, hence we as Cabinet agreed that uh, the IMTT would have to come and brief communities and all stakeholders in the Northwest on the progress that they have made, supported, of course, by, 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 by Cabinet on their views with regard to the way forward. The timelines, as I've said, there will be possibly a, 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 a media brief that would take place uh, before the end of, of next week that would also outline the work that has been done already, including the work that they would continue to do. It will not be, it is not a once-off issue because the intention by government is to reposition the Northwest uh, government uh, and, and ensure that uh, the challenges that are there, both systemic and those that are subjective, are all being attended to. Thanks, Minister. I think you've covered. I think the last round, uh, Pretoria, you don't have any, any other question? No questions. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Tabo, 
and then yes, it's you, and then Anika, you're the last. Thank you. Uh, Minister, my name is Tabo Mukuni. I work for the Sunday Times. Why, why wait for next week, uh, you know, given the political situation in the Northwest? Um, you don't need me to tell you what's happening in the Northwest. Surely you know. Um, you see it on TV every day. Um, the situation is quite tense. Why, why, why wait for next week? Minister Jan Lange from Report Newspaper. Did Cabinet discuss regarding the, the, uh, the tariffs introduced by the United States against our steel imports? Did Cabinet discuss the possibility that uh, behind this may be the way South Africa votes in the United Nations against uh, proposals or, or take positions against U.S. policy? Thank you very much. Annika Larson uh, from ENCA. Uh, Minister, I'd, uh, could you explain to us possibly um, why the issue of Mr. Manana would not be on the agenda for discussion, considering he is an MP, uh, this is a very high-profile case. Um, it, seems, it seems remiss and somewhat odd. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No, th thanks once more. Um, why wait for next week? Um, as I've indicated, we received the preliminary report uh, on the Northwest. There is work in progress that is being done, and there are considerations that have been put before Cabinet. And it would be quite important that when the IMTT, on behalf of uh, the South African government, comes out to, to brief. Uh, the public, it would have also dealt with our own internal processes, both in government, in the Northwest, and across different stakeholders that are affected. We, we, we have also as government, uh, and of course you don't have to remind us, we know, we see what is happening. We, we have also been able to bring the situation uh, to some calmness and reassuring uh, South Africans that uh, we are giving attention to the, to the situation in the Northwest. And as I'm saying, by next week, there will be a comprehensive report based on the report that was presented. And, and we're quite certain that uh, that uh, media brief will be an, an inclusive uh, 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 briefing that also uh, uh, give more indication on the work ahead. Uh, and, and, and as I've said, repositioning the Northwest and making sure that uh, we, we continue to do the work and serving the people of the Northwest in an integrated and coordinated manner as the three spheres of government. On the tariffs, um, yes, we, we did discuss. It is also in the statement because for us it's not only on steel, it does also include uh, the aluminium a, a, a space. Uh, we were briefed also by Minister Rob Davis, and hence uh, our commitment to continue engaging the United States uh, uh, bilaterally, including in the forums that are there to deal with this issue. As uh, to whether it has to do with how South Africa votes in the UN and stuff, I think our sovereignty and our right has to be respected. And um, we're not the only ones who at some time have, are found to be on the opposite of how the U.S. votes. But we do believe that uh, given our own historical abilities, we will be in a position to continue engaging the United States of, of America. Both our Minister of, of uh, International Relations as well as the Minister of Trade and Industry are seized with this particular with this particular matter. Anika, you, you, you're raising the issue of uh, Mtutuzi Manana as to why was it not a, an item of, of cabinet. Cabinet has got its own processes of uh, putting up items for discussion. And as I've said, without dealing with Mtutuzi Manana as an individual, cabinet has a view on gender-based violence. And that includes actions that are similar to those that uh, have been uh, done by Mtutuzi Manana, and therefore the condemnation does apply even to him. 
um, and, and, and I do believe that you would also understand our system in government. Duduzi Manana is a member of parliament, and you might also be aware, Anika, that uh, the Speaker of Parliament has actually issued a statement um, because Duduzi Manana also does actually uh, uh, um, uh, account and is a member of parliament. You are also aware, Anika, that our Minister of, of Women and, and, and Children, uh, Comrade Batabi Lamini has also issued a statement and as the minister we're quite sure that she speaks on behalf of government with regard to government stance and what we have pronounced here now. Sorry, just follow up minister, thank you. Um, yes, the ANC however hasn't said anything which I think has been a, a glaring omission. Can I help you even on that? Yes, please. Yes. I'm not here, I'm not Pule Mabi, no no Zizi Koto are here, uh, no the SG. Uh, we're here to, to, to brief South Africans on uh, government, uh, on cabinet uh, issues, and I'm sure you are aware that just this morning Zizi Koto was out on record uh, commenting also and, 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 and making a statement on behalf of the African National Congress. So I would, I would, I would avoid the temptation of... Uh, having to assume a responsibility beyond uh, uh, that that one has been given because tomorrow it will be seen as an abuse. It has been condemned within the broader uh, statement that we have made around gender-based uh, violence and we do believe that he's not exempted from what we believe should happen to perpetrators. Just one last minister, if you can engage. Is it two on the US? Just to follow up on the two questions. Will, will South Africa's vote in, in, in the U.S. and on, in the U.N. and on, on other fora be part of the discussions on steel and, and aluminium uh, tariffs? No, it won't. Thanks, Minister. Gay Davis, Eyewitness News again. I hope I'm not going to be getting you to stray into uh, Lutuli House territory here with this question, but to what extent do you think the uh, the compli the comp there are complications for government in terms of acting more speedily, in terms of intervening in Northwest. Uh, to what extent are the are those state interventions being held hostage, if you like, by the internal dynamics that are currently at play within the governing party? Thanks. In fact, uh, since the last cabinet, uh, there's been a lot of uh, progress done with regard to interventions by central government. Um, we know what is now being done in the area of uh, uh, health in the province. We know what uh, National Treasury has also been attending to. We are aware how the, 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 the criminal justice uh, cluster has also uh, been able to work. In fact, there hasn't been any blockage. There's been, and I think the last time the IMTT spoke, it actually confirmed that there's a lot of cooperation that they find from the province of uh, the Northwest. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of the briefing, and thanks for coming. And see you in two weeks' time.